Okay, we have a another integral. This one's from JE Main 2006, problem 24. We have the integral from zero to pi of x, f of sine of x, dx. Okay, I thought this one was a really good example of why sometimes I have difficulty doing videos on problems from the JE Main or JE Advanced, because this is in like a really different format than what I'm used to. First of all, I'm not used to having an integral where we just have like a function, a generic function inside. The other thing that makes it a little confusing is like it's not clear at first what we need to do with this. The good thing is this is actually a multiple choice, so that's going to give us some clue as to how we can transform this. Okay, so for my first step, just looking at our bounds going from zero to pi, it's making me think this would be a good case to use King's principle. Okay, so for King's principle, we'll just use what we have down here, and the key thing is figuring out what this f of b plus a minus x is going to be. Well, we have our lower bound's gonna be the A, our upper bound's gonna be B, so we add them together, we just get pi. So for this value, so putting it together for this right here, this is just gonna be F of pi minus X. So let's just do this and update everything. So first, the bounds stay the same, so we're going from zero to pi. Then for X, we need to plug in pi minus X. This becomes pi minus X. Here, we're gonna have F of, and again, we've got no idea what this function is, but it's, it shouldn't matter, right? Because otherwise we couldn't do the problem. So we're just gonna have this fake function and we plug in our input. But the nice thing about this is, this is just the supplementary angle formula for cosine. So for this, we just know that this is the same thing as sine of x. So then transforming this back to sine of x, let's take this f of sine of x and distribute it into the pi minus x. And then we can break this up into two integrals so the first one we're going to have pi times this function, but I can bring the pi up front as a constant, and then we have just f of sine x over here for the first one. And then we're going to have the minus between these two integrals, so we'll have that. And then for this second integral, now we just have x, f of sine of x. But then the thing we notice now is this right here, this is going to be the same exact thing as our original integral here. So what we can do is start using some labels. I'll put a label on the original integral, we'll call that i. So then we haven't changed anything. So everything here, this is all I, but here, this is another copy of I. So that what I could do to simplify this, let's just add a copy of I on both sides. When we add a copy here, this is gonna cancel this off. But then over here, when we add an I, this is gonna become two I over here. So then let's just, so then just make it clear, let's divide off this two, divide off two here. And so this is gonna isolate what we want. Our I, it's gonna be just pi over two times the integral from zero to pi f of sine of x. And when I first did this, I thought maybe this would be enough. This means we've transformed it, we got rid of our x, we've got something presumably simpler, but this is not one of our multiple choice options. Okay, next for here, what we have, I've added another formula on the board now. We did King's principle earlier, now we have Queen's principle. What this is gonna allow me to do, it's not a big change, but we cut the bound from here to here. The upper bound cuts in half and we kind of bring it to it. It's kind of like we peel a two off of this upper bound. So it's, it's kind of minor, but it does help us simplify it in some cases. So in order to do this, we have this condition. We need to check that f of 2a minus x is going to be the same thing as f of x, where in our case, our f of x is going to be this right here. And our 2a is this upper bound. So all we need to do is this check, which we actually did in the previous step, I think, is it's just, again, 2a is pi, so we're just checking f of pi minus x, and we already found that what's gonna happen when we do this, we use the supplementary angle formula, and we get back our f of sine x again. So this condition, so this first condition here is true, so this allows me to do this, which just is gonna be, we pull a two out, pi over two times two, this becomes pi. We cut this bound in half, like we have here, going from 2a to a, so this becomes zero to pi over two, f of sine of x. But now here, this is still not one of our multiple choice options, so we need to go back and do some more stuff. So what we can do now is we can just go back to King's principle again. We can use this again, the bounds are different, so it's gonna be a little different. But now for our f of b plus a minus x, now our b plus a is just gonna be pi over two. So for the value we want, we want f of pi over two minus x. If we plug that in here, this is gonna be f of sine pi over two minus x. But for this thing right here, this is actually just the complementary angle formula. So when we have sine pi over two minus x, this is the same thing as cosine x. So we'll go ahead and use this and update everything. We still have our pi out front. Bounds are gonna stay the same. 
But now at this step, we transform sine to cosine. So this becomes f of cosine of x dx. But then here, this matches the fourth option, the multiple choice. So for my final solution, we just have pi times the integral of zero to pi over two of f cosine x dx, and that's it. Okay, there you have it. Good problem from J.E. Main 2006. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.